How are you? My name is Pat Campbell, radio talk show host from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and you are listening to The Rational Mail 101. Today's episode is number 45, and we're going to be talking about the book of Pook. Actually, Pook. Who is Pook? Pook. Um, why is he important? We're going to get into the book and, and much, much more. Of course, I'm joined by the godfather of the Manosphere himself, mm. the one, the only rational male, Mr. Rolo Tomasi. You can refer to me as cult leader from cult here leader. on out. Yes. Room, right? Cult leader. Sounds good. <laughs> so, um, you know, what I actually wanted to start today is you saw that uh, that tweet I put up less than, what was it, 21 hours ago? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was a picture of uh, Jason... Uh, Statham, right? The actor. Yeah, Statham. Uh -huh. and, and, right. And his, um, it's not his wife, but they've been together for like nine years. I think they're engaged. I think they might have a kid together as well. Yep. But, but the look, the look says everything, you know, oh, he's, yeah. he's, he's got it going on. Right. Yep. And I, I put, your, one of your, put one of your quotes up there. Women want to be with men who other women want to make love to and yeah. other men want to be. Yes. And I said, exhibit a below, be that mm -hmm. guy, be that guy. Amazing comments on this too. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the stuff guys are saying, you know, it's like they're trying to, well, if he worked at Walmart, she wouldn't be with him. Or The point is this guy's got it going on and mm -hmm. everybody knows it, including the woman he's with. Yes. So we want to sort of work on, because this really is the, uh, I guess, the premise behind the book of Pook mm -hmm. is to become that guy. Yeah. What be do you the, need to do be to the, become that guy? Be the A guy, right. right? Not the B guy. Be the A guy. Um, I actually have an essay called that too, like be the be the A guy. And of course, it has the A team as the little lead-in picture there. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I mean that's be the guy that um, you know, that is you know, get get the girl that's the hell yes girl, right? And to be to have the hell yes girl, you've got to be the A guy. And I think that I'll I don't think I'm like me or Pook or anybody else is really saying anything like super um, like revolutionary here about like, you know, be the alpha, be the guy that, that she wants to be with. I think that um, the, uh, the, the problems that you run into with this is there's like just what you were saying before is like guys will come in and they'll try to find ways to qualify it. They'll say, well, you know, he's famous. Okay. Yeah, he is. He's famous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, he's got a lot of money. Yeah, he is. He's got a lot of money, but that's, that doesn't preclude him from being the guy that she is looking up to. She's right. the, the, the woman in, I mean, it's just an attractive girl. She's with, she's with him. Um, another really good example of this is Vince Castle. I don't know if you're familiar with Vince Castle. Um, he's got a, he had a, a, a girlfriend, black girlfriend actually, who uh, he ended up marrying. And the guy is a bit older than my, uh, me. I think he's like 55 or something. And um, oh, yeah, she yeah. has that, like, he's an actor. He, right. She has that look. I mean, in everything and in every Instagram picture and in every photo that, that they're in, she is looking up to him. She's got the, the, the eyes are, you know, the, her eyeballs are dilated every time she's looking at the guy. And this, and this is not like, you know, planned photography. This is like, um, these are candid shots. And, and I would like to think that, you know, maybe the Statham shots are also candid as well, but I think it's really easy to, um, to read body language when it's in the negative. Right. It's very right. easy to to say, oh, that's a that's a beta tell. We can see what like I've, I've written and anybody by now probably knows uh, the uh, post I put up. Gosh, it's, it's been a year ago. I don't know when it was, but I did a, a post on body language and right. I am I am not a body language expert. I'm not like Joe Navarro or anything like that, but I know enough. Right. I know enough from seeing these like we live finally in an era where we are bombarded with images like constantly. We are. I don't think people realize this. We are bombarded with images like way more than we have ever been at any time in human history. Yeah. So, so we're, you know, when we look at like magazines and we look at TV and the rise of TV and, and advertising and mass media mm -hmm. um, right now, just being online, you're going to be, I, I don't know what it is. I would love to see the stats for this, but we are just simply bombarded with images all, constantly, whether it's, it's Instagram or Snapchat or, you know, any of the social medias and stuff. That um, tweet, well, that tweet I put up because of that image, you saw the traffic on that. It's insane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the engagement is is unbelievable. Yeah. Well, and because people want to see that, and they either want to read into it and say, "Well, um, well, that's an alpha tell." That's the first thing I saw when I when I look at that right. because he is. It, it, if you look at most couples' pictures, right. the woman is looking off, and the guy is like looking in. The guy is leaning, and we always say, right. you know, "Don't don't lean in," right? Or um, 
it's it's when we see a woman looking up to a man we mm -hmm. we uh i think there's sort of this understanding that what what the frame is there we see we see him looking up and we go oh man what an alpha guy or what a, what or if you're if you're of the feminist persuasion we think oh she's just this poor little waif who just doesn't know any better and she should really stand up for herself and it's we get all of these feelings just uh uh, cono connotated mm -hmm. by by just a gesture, just mm -hmm. by reading that language. And by, 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 by the way, real quick on the side, art. real ahead. quick on the side here, the the body language. Mm -hmm. You know, Vince Harris. We've had him on the program. I bring him on the oh. show because he really is a body language expert. I mean, mm -hmm. they will bring him into a courtroom to analyze what somebody said, how they said it, what they did. Mm -hmm. I sent him a picture that we are not going to talk about this week. We'll talk about next week. You know the one yes. I'm talking about? Yeah, he had I'm working no, on something about that too, yeah, by the he, way. So. He had no idea who either player was, mm -hmm. but based solely on the language, he nailed it. He told me exactly what's going on. Yeah. And everybody, exactly. <laughs> and everybody in the chat room knows exactly who we're talking yeah, about and exactly what's going on. So let's. Uh, uh, all, all I'm going to say is when, my Wednesday show is going to be a very interesting show. Cool. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. So, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, when you see something like that, I, I, I'm glad you posted that because that's an alpha tell and it's, it's easy to post beta tells. It's a little bit right. more difficult to post an alpha tell because most people don't want to agree that it is an alpha tell. Mm -hmm. So they have to find some way to qualify it and some way to tear it down. And also I should, I should mention this is that is a method of disqualification that is intra sexual combat right there between guys like saying well oh you know uh if, if he's a good looking dude like a, a good looking dude walks into the room and all the women moon over him what's the first thing guys say well he must be gay right you know guys well, like that when, are, when i when i put the must picture be gay. Up, when yeah. i put that picture up of jason they're all mm -hmm. well first of all he's short one guy said, no, he's 5'10", and then so no, he's really more like 5'8". Um, you know, he, he's if he was working at Walmart, would he get that girl? A couple of people said he's, he's gay. This is coming from guys, not from, from women. Because yeah, yeah. women usually are the ones that do that, you know? Instant, they must be gay or must be oh, really small, right? Yeah. You know, that, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's like that's how they're trying to discredit what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and okay, and, and in um, in context, yes, they're correct that, of course, the guy has social proof. The guy has fame. The guy has money. The guy has, you know, he's a good looking dude. He's, you know, he's an actor. He's in, I mean, what Statham is like kind of a B-lister, I think. Did you see, did you, God, the last time I saw that guy was in the movie called The Meg, like the Megalodon, like it's like this big giant, like prehistoric shark. It was the most ridiculous thing in the world, but he's there. I mean, he's, he, he's you know, in you know his right, name. He's in something right now with uh, Dwayne Johnson, The <laughs> Rock. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 That's right. Right. I think he's I mean, maybe he's sort of coming out of the B-list or shadow mm -hmm. right now. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, probably a great dude, you know, but, you uh, know, people have to find ways to disqualify that and say, well, you know, you're reading too much into that. And of course, it's like the rational mind. That's, this is a really good uh, observation. Um, it's the rational mind versus the instinctual mind. So mm -hmm. instinctually, we see that and we go, OK, this woman is looking up to him. The, uh, the body language is one of he controls the frame. There's some sort of deference there. Right. She looks like she is happy to be with that guy and is and doesn't care. And, and this is this is a really important aspect mm -hmm. when it, when you look at like pictures of of him or of like Vince Castle or of, of any relationship right. where that like take that and compare that to like Prince Harry. Mm -hmm. and and, oh, and oh. uh megan markle take to those pictures versus that you can see what the difference is right there but like instinctually we know what's going on but our rational mind says well we shouldn't read too much it might have been the photographer you know place yeah, yeah, yeah. right well yeah. he's got a lot of money or there's it's it's funny to me like just as you know just sort of a social psychologist or a, you know a, a student of you know human behavior to see not just the actual photo itself and what's right. going on but like people's reactions to it as well well the other thing was some some guys were saying that she's a tranny and i'm thinking in in what world it's but but everything to minimize what's going on the, the point of that whole picture is that yeah. you want to be that guy you want to be the guy that other that women want to uh, be with and that other men want to be he's mm -hmm. got it going on whether you like it or not you know you're fan not a fan and the other picture, men want to be the picture yeah. encapsulates that all the thing the thing with the picture is though it's simply the optics. There has to be more, right? There has to be a manifestation of that. There has right. to be, you know, otherwise we don't have the theory. If there's, if we don't see that in real life. So, I mean, th like I've said before, it's like when I was in my rock star twenties, I didn't, I mean, I had like pretty low paying jobs and was living in a one bedroom studio mm -hmm. apartment in North Hollywood at that time. And it's like, I, 
you know, when you talk about my notch count, the majority of my notch count came when I didn't have any money, you know, so it wasn't so much fame or money. It was just, it was attitude. It was, you know, there's a certain amount of looks to it as well. And you playing that character and you being larger than life, I think, and being the guy that other men want to be and other women want to have sex with. And that's uh, why is that? Well, it's because it's an association on women's ego about mm -hmm. like the kind of guy that they can get with. Right. So, so that's the, uh, the, the other important point here too, is you want, you want a woman, first of all, genuine desire is obviously the, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the grand goal here, but you want a woman that wants you for who you are, mm -hmm. not what you are yeah. or what you can do for her. You don't, you don't want her because, you know, she, she doesn't, you don't want her wanting you because you're a star football player. Well, what happens when football's over? Right. Yeah. Or, right. you know, it's one thing or another later anymore. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, I and I and I feel you there too. I I think that most women are are pretty much predisposed to that. I was I just got into a sort of a debate with some people talking about like my my concept of well my idea of how like men and women have different concepts of love and right. women are naturally predisposed to be attracted to what a man is, not who that guy is. Right. The the who part doesn't come until after the what part. Right. And sometimes it's predicated, her attraction, her investment, her mm -hmm. emotional, you know, investment in you is predicated on what you are because what you are gives her the feelings. Right. That's, that's what she associates, when she associates excitement, when she associates, um, you know, some sort of, I don't say meaning, but like maybe some meaning with you as well um, as to like, what kind of guy can she get? And is she proud to be with that guy? Is she, does she, you know, is that someone that satisfies and knocks you know checks off the parts of her um her intellect you know her hypergamous checklist is are you that guy or um are you not that guy pretty much and how does that manifest later on so, the so way you, you wanna... carry, the way you carry yourself too plays a really big role i mean mm -hmm. you, you well, don't have dominant. to be, that's, yeah, that's you know, a dominance thing yeah well you, there's certain people when they walk in a room i'll give you, I'll give you an example bill clinton mm -hmm. i'm not a big fan of his right mm -hmm. but when he walks in a room, he just he owns it. Everybody is drawn to him. We all know somebody like that who, yeah. who you know, regardless of whether they're man or a woman, there's something about them that is just like, who's that? Oh yeah, I, you know, it, it, it can be looks, but a lot of times with guys, it's it's more than that. It's the way they carry themselves. There's people hate it when I refer to Bill Clinton as an alpha because he was oh, definitely, yeah, he was totally definitely alpha. an alpha, and it and it shows in in his behavior and what he. I mean, back in his day, obviously, right. I mean, Bill's pretty old right now, but right. um, but I mean, he's always been been very alpha, and I think that was one of the. <laughs> I think that was probably one of the things that put pushed Hillary over the edge in some ways because she had to out alpha him or she felt like she was trying to out alpha him because she was, she's a man. Basically she's pushed herself. She's defined herself in masculine terms. Mm -hmm. So like when people, ask, people tell me, or they ask me about like, can a woman be an alpha female? I go, well, yeah, but not in the terms that you're probably thinking. A lot of people think of Al uh, uh, of Hillary as, as being alpha or like some, you know, uh, kick ass woman in this is a CEO right. and she's in, and it's like, it's like you're defining that woman in terms like as an alpha in, in masculine terms and male terms. Hillary is nothing without Bill. Without Bill, Hillary does not exist. Oh, yeah. That's part of the reason she stuck with first of all, she knew he was a womanizer, right? Oh yeah. But she had to stay with him through the presidency, not divorce him there, because mm -hmm. she needed him, she needed his name, all of that to get into the Senate and ultimately to run for president. Or and I think she was Secretary of State too for a while. But she had to have him in order for her to get to that level without him, she would have never been any of those. Yeah. And again, here you have a woman who is basing, well, I mean, for a professional career, for sure, but she's basing her ego based on the kind of guy that she can get with. And Bill mm -hmm. Clinton was definitely an alpha and that's why she never divorced him. And that's why they never split up. And you never, I mean, they probably haven't had sex in like, you know, oh, I don't years, even want to think about but, it. Yeah. They, but, they, uh, they just put an no. anniversary picture up. I saw last that. Week. Yeah. And it looks like she was wearing some sort of awning or tent. I'm not sure. But yeah. I'm, I'm looking at Bill, and he's, he's got a smile on his face. And I said, the only reason he's got the smile there is he's thinking about that time they snuck Sharon Stone.
Stone into the White House when Hillary was away. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't condone what he did, but you know what? I, I totally I understand. understand. Totally I understand. understand. What he, I yeah. totally get it. And I, the, of course, the Chris Rock out of uh, the Chris Rock uh, bit that he used to do on, on them was was spot on. So uh so we get into 15 lessons, right? Get into 15 lessons. Okay, here. so I, in, I, uh, I want to make sure I'm on the right page. Is, is the first one rejection is better than regret? Yeah. Well, actually, I sh I uh, no, actually, a foresight teaches gently, error teaches brutally. I think really what we need to do yeah. first here is sort of, of yeah. uh, come to terms with who Pook was. Who was so, Pook? Was so Pook, like, okay, as people know, I was involved. Um, I was a moderator of this forum. I was a participant in this forum. It was a great forum, and I've, I've already put the links in the description here. Um, that has been around for a very long time. It's called SoSwap. SoSwap was one of the very first, I don't want to call it pickup because it was, it was a little bit more than just pickup back in the early 2000s, like 2001, 2002, actually even before that, because the, the, um, the forum that you see today is actually the second forum that's that so swap was because they kind of transitioned way back in the early 2000s um to where they are right now so there was actually a whole nother forum before this that pook was a part of and then he was also a part of the second version of so swap but so swap was one of those early forums where guys would get together and they would compare notes it would be like field reports it was it was sort of a little bit i, I think it was more really kind of like the thinking man's version of alt fast seduction which used to be mystery uh mystery and neil strauss and all these guys from the game that's where they used to come together and, so he and compare is, notes. he is a real person he is not a, a real not person. A positive of a bunch of individuals. No, there, no, he is a real a person. A before there was a Rolo, before there was a Roosh, before there was a Royce, there was Pook. And Pook was actually, I, I think a lot of people have a hard time with Pook. Um, because Pook was very prosaic and he he offered a lot of that's why we, we call him an enigma, right? He's Explain kind of a what that means because right? some people may not know. Okay, so here's what the and and when I start reading some of his work here, you'll understand why. Um a lot of what we have developed into like red pill ideas right now were hashed out on the SoSwap forum back in the very early 2000s. And so when people tell me that, you know, MGTOW was the original red pill or this, I'm like, no, dude. And I can show you the I can show you the posts where we were calling it red pill as far back as 2002. Okay. Um, and so so let's just I mean, just to get our history right here, you have to understand the history before you can really understand Pook, because Pook used to come out and he, he would interact with you and stuff too um but he was always very kind of above it all and he was uh so he would present some of these these red pill what we would call red pill truths because it wasn't called it wasn't really it was there was no manosphere back then it was just sort of like the seduction community and um and so he was kind of a he was kind of a, a personality, definitely a personality for the SoSwab forum. And that you know that was a great thing about SoSwab is they had Pook. That's that was their claim to fame was that that Pook was a regular there. And so I interacted with Pook. A lot of other people did. And I mean we're talking. Did you ever meet him in person? I've never met him in person, and I don't think anybody actually has ever met Pook in person. Um, Mr. After about so he was very active up until about 2004, almost 2005, and then he disappeared. And that he just decided that he was done with whatever it is he, he had to say on on the forums. And that was it. Uh, there is a uh, a blog that people say was Pook, but the writing doesn't uh, it doesn't read like Pook. Mm -hmm. And well, I think that's one of the fascinating things about um, Red Pill and, and, and blog uh, this blog space, the Manosphere, whatever you want to call it, is. Like when Roycey decided to leave, to stop being Roycey and he turned it over to Hartiste, the, the, the blog that it is right now, you could tell that the tone changed. And if you've been involved in this, you can see that it's probably being written by somebody who's not the original author. The same thing was was going on kind of with Pook at that time. So really, Pook was active and was very profound and significant, I think, from about 2001 till right about maybe 2005 somewhere yeah. in there but the thing is is that a lot of what he talked about and a lot of the discussions that we had back in that time um were the basis for a lot of ideas that ended up in my book that ended up in in Roosh's work that ended up in Royce's work that ended up in a lot of these other guys um and I'm not saying he was the originator of it but I'm saying he just brought those topics up so that we could talk about them but here's the thing the problem with Pook is, like I said, he's kind of inaccessible to some guys. You either love Pook or you hate Pook. Most people don't even know who I'm talking about right now because that was so long ago. And I think really we're kind of seeing a generational shift within the Manosphere 
at, at this day because we're talking about we're talking about posts that were almost 18 years ago. Um, so so when we read Pook, it's kind of prosaic. It's kind of like poetic, I guess. Like he he represents things in like almost like a fiction, but he's teaching a lesson through these fictions. Right. And so you have to sort of read into it what he's actually talking about. So people who are very, very literalist, and that's like you know, 80, 90% of the internet right now, everybody wants to say, well, why can't he just say it straight out? How come he can't just, you know, and then that, but see, that's the thing is like, Pook draws you in. And so you understand things in a little bit, in a bigger picture, because you have to sort of suss out what it is that he's talking about. And we're going to do a little bit of that here today with the, with the 15 lessons. Good. So, um, so I, I'll, I'll read a little bit. I, I don't want to read the whole thing because it will take us forever to go through these things. Because again, like I said, it's prosaic. Sometimes it's a little long. We could actually do a series on this. Yeah, we probably time. could. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I just want to. I, I put the most. I put the three most. Um, I would say profound threads. Um, that Pook has ever done okay. in the description for this. So if you want to sort of seek out what it is he's talking about, or if you want to read what the conversation was going on, remember this was taking place back in like 2002, 2003, somewhere around there. Um, so bear that in mind. There is no red pill when all of this conversation is going on. All right, so so that's, let's, that's why let's, this is important. And so there's there's three that I gave. Um, there's the, the lessons, which we're going to talk about right now. Right. There's aphorisms. And then there is also the anti-dumps machine. Okay. If you are interested in the game aspect, anti-dumps machine is where it is. I, I can't possibly do justice to anti-dump machine in one or in a two hour podcast. That's why I said we'd have to do a, series. It's a 10 part series for that thing. And it's great. So if anybody is unfamiliar with Pook and you, you call yourself red pill and you've read my book, thank you very, very much. But you really need to go back and look at some of the early stuff too, just so you have sort of a well-rounded education. And the other one we got to where we are. Yeah, the other so there's aphorisms and then there's anti dumps machine and then there's the 15 lessons. Aphorisms is just again, like I said, he's very prosaic. Um, and so he's talking in aphorisms, but they're red pill aphorisms. Gotcha. So, All right, anyway. so let's, let's get into some of this stuff here. We start okay. with foresight teaches gent. This is deep too. Foresight mm -hmm. teaches gently, right? Error, error, excuse me, teaches brutally. Teaches Let me say that brutally. Again. Foresight teaches gently. Error teaches brutally. What's that right. about? What does it mean? Right. Okay. Well, here's the thing is we, when we get to, um, because here's the deal is um, he, he throws this out here to us because this is in the say, this is lesson one right here. Foresight right. teaches gently. It's also part, I should say this as well, because I think I missed it. I was mistaken on this. Rejection is better than regret. This is, this is all in the same lesson. So, so foresight teaches gently. Uh, error teaches brutally says, uh, so he, what he does is he sort of imagines himself talking to young men, to young men to, okay. you know, sort of impart knowledge. Right. And so, uh, so what happens is he goes through this series of steps, um, and, uh, just like runs through these examples. And so uh, just to, just to start here with the first lesson, uh, Foresight teaches gently, error teaches brutally is really the same kind of message as um, uh, experience teaches harsh, but it right. teaches best. And then that led into, um, and I'm just going to read the bolded parts here, rejection is better than regret. And I have used this, Roosh has used this, Royce has used you, you this. You say rejection mm -hmm. is temporary, it's regret temporary. can last a lifetime. Right. Well, and so what happens is, uh, is I think this is not, a, this is no big secret, but like most guys get cold feet. They don't, they get, um, they get what's uh, like mystery method used to be based on the three second rule. If you see a girl that you want, that you're attracted to, that you would like to get to know that you want to approach, you have three seconds to do so. If you don't do it after three seconds, and this was also part of uh, real social dynamics. If you don't do so, then you don't do it. You have to go in and enter into action with boldness. That's from 48 laws of power. He, right? he who hesitates is lost. Yeah. Also hesitation can get you killed. Yes, Hes uh, hesitate and thou art lost. That's uh, yeah, yeah. that's even Shakespeare. So, so what it is is it's not so much impulsivity as it is the longer you take as a guy. This is this this is probably I think one of the the deepest lessons. I, I'm glad he started with this one too because it it recognizes so much. When I talk about buffers and how guys are very um, they want to insulate themselves. Um, with buffers from rejection because rejection is really tough. Like you and I, I think we talked about this like two weeks ago 
where we're talking about uh, how to deal with rejection mm -hmm. or what, why is it that men, and I said this before, is that I, uh, men will face rejection far more than women do because men have a burden of performance. Mm -hmm. Men must become, women just are. So in order to become, you have to risk rejection. You have to put yourself out there. You have to, I mean, one of the, re I think one of my points of contention with MGTOW right now is because there, that it becomes a buffer for a lot of guys who, um, who just say, you know what, I, the game is rigged and I don't want to play it, so I'm not going to do so. So it's like nothing ventured, nothing gained kind of thing. And they go, well, I'm just not going to play, right? Well, the problem is, is you can't pull yourself out of the game. At some point, you are going to be, whether it's by a man or a woman, you're going to be judged by your performance as a man when people size you up. When they're, when, whenever it's like, if they, if they see if you've been working out, I mean, it could be a physical thing. It could be a mental thing. It could be, you know, a professional thing. It could be just who you are as a man, because regardless of whether you decide that you want to play the game or not, you are going to be judged based on your performance because men must become women. Let me, let me, let me, let me throw something at you before sure. I forget about this, because we're talking about how to build, how can you become that guy? What everybody wants to be that guy. Right. Okay? right. But you're talking about the hesitation. One of the hallmarks of a a real alpha is decisiveness. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. and, and people, Ooh, some, people, yeah. some people around me, it drives them crazy. I Before I even go into a restaurant, I already know what I'm going to order. When mm -hmm. I go into a store, I don't go into browse for an hour. I'm in and out in five minutes because I know what I want. I'm decisive. Mm -hmm. That That is a key trait of an alpha. Yes. Yes. I should. I would, I would definitely concur with that. Um, in, in this first lesson here, he goes about how guys talk themselves out of approaching or they talk mm -hmm. themselves out of taking risks. And I think that this is, uh, again, this is really kind of deep because we teach our boys as if they're defective girls. Mm -hmm. And part of that education is not to take risks because women are interested in security. They want to be secure in a very insecure world. And for the most part, most part of our, you know, uh, our ancestral past, it's been the men who are the risk takers. In fact, there, it's been said by, uh, I think it's Steven Pinker is that, um, that nature itself takes more risks with men than it does with women. That's why women live longer than men, right? Because men are the risk takers. Men are the ones that go out and, and are the doers because they know that they must become. And so even, even on a biological level, I think what it is is like, uh, and this is from the red queen is that, uh, because men have, have testosterone, it predisposes us to different diseases or it predisposes us to, um, like one of the reasons that, that they say that, um, again, this is all theoretical here. One of the reasons is that when we see traits in a man, like a square jaw or like, or muscularity or that V taper or the things that we would say are cues for high testosterone, what that is saying in an evolutionary sense is that this guy has succeeded in spite of the risks involved in having that amount of testosterone. Yeah. He's the, that's one of the reasons I think that women are attracted to guys who are, you know, who are killers, right? Guys who are uh, incarcerated in prison. Um, or uh, I just posted a tweet not too long ago about this study about how women are attracted to guys who display uh, the traits and the behaviors of psychopathy. Right. The dark triad traits that we talk all talk about all the time. Why is that? Well, because those are the risk takers. Those are the guys who are who will either die or they will succeed at what it is that they're doing. But they're decisive about it, just like you were saying. And that is definitely not just a physical trait of an alpha male, but it's also a mental trait of an alpha male. Um, in here is also said, you know, rejection is better than regret. OK. Why is he saying that? Because most guys will not take the chance and they will regret not having taken that chance. Now, this is um, people are going to disagree with me. The literalists are going to disagree with me here, but it's better to regret something that you have done than to regret something that you have not right. done. Right. And uh, I mean, in the in the larger scope of things. So um, that's kind of what he gets in here, too. Um, and then R Pook says this. He, this is sort of like a caveat to this. He says, remember, change is gradual. Before you saw no opportunities. Now you see them all around you, yet you are too hesitant to take them. You are slowly becoming more aware. Right. So he says, when you find yourself hesitant, always yield to action. If you see her, do not wait, gawk, or wait for a perfect moment. Action, action, action. I've written posts about this as well. Always default to game. Always default to action. Even in 48 Laws of Power, same thing. Enter into action with boldness. 
that is that's really what he's kind of getting into in all of this. Um, but it's part of a larger narrative just for, and this is just lesson one here. Okay. So, um, because even if you are rejected, you still took the chance, you still put yourself out there. You still went and made, you, you made an attempt to become right. by doing that. Most, I'm going to tell a story here real quick. Most people never ask for the sale. When I went to Orlando back in 2004 in audition for a morning show on WFLA 540, mm -hmm. I went on, I made sure I talked about local issues. And at the very tail end of the program, I said, if you like what you've been hearing for the last day or two, however many days they had me down there, I said, please, you know, drop an email to management. I said, because I would love to come down here with my family and become part of the community and talk with you daily, right? Mm -hmm. That is what sold, because they had some really good talent coming to town to try out for the job, right? But the guy, the guy that actually hired me, he says, that's when you had me. He says, 95% of people go through life never asking for the sale. He said, you asked for it. He says, you got it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Now, yeah. and that's another thing um, I was going to say is that remember all of this when when Pook is going through this, this is back in the heyday. This is this is prior to um, the the game, the book, the game being published at this time, because uh, uh, the game was not published until 2005. So we're talking about prior to like all the stuff that's happening in the book, the game is happening probably around this time, anywhere 2002, 2003. And so all of this is kind of revolutionary, right? People are, are, are thinking of this, but like their uh, part of pickup artist technique has always been presume the sale. Right. Always be closing is, is you know, they're, they're using salesman techniques. Coffee is for closers, man. Yep. Don't forget it. <laughs> okay, so that's lesson one. Um, lesson two, this is about friendship. Okay. And this, the, the main point of lesson two is, uh, let's see here. Uh, friendship, abandon all hope ye who enter here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, and I'm going to see if I can get this, uh, because they're okay. So what he goes into is a lot of what I talk about when I talk about how men and women cannot be friends. Right. And I don't mean friends in the term. And this is, I should say this is this was, um, kind of influential for me to sort of develop why I feel that men and women cannot be the same quality of friends as they are with their, with their same sex friends and how women use friendship as like, as I've always said, you know, men are, uh, women have boyfriends and girlfriends. If you're not banging her, you're her girlfriend. Whoa, I can't believe you say something like that. I can be platonic friends. Well, here's the thing is you can do that. You can be platonic friends, but she's going to interact with you as if you are one of her girlfriends, because if you talk to her like a girl, if you interact with her like a girl, if you accept her platonic friendship terms, she is going to compare you not as she's not going to be friends with you on terms of a guy. She's going to be friends on to, uh, in terms of a girl. So like when guys hit me up and they say, well, I'm friends with girls all the time. And I'm like, OK, what do you do? Do you sit at home and, and giggle and paint nails together and talk about cute boys? <laughs> what exactly do you do as her friend? Yeah. Right. And people say, well, I'm, I don't, I'm not an asshole. That doesn't mean that's not what I'm saying. You don't have to be in You can still be an acquaintance. There's plenty of women that I work with all the time, but I don't go, Hey, let me call. Hey, let's go. You want to go see a movie? You know, you want to go hang out. You want to go, uh, you know, play games. You want to go do this. You want to go do that. And, it's the other thing is like there's always like guys will say, well, you know, if if it's uh, if there's if the sex thing thing is gone, then you can be perfectly good friends. I like that's only to a point, because what happens is once that woman gets into a or you get into a, um, an intersexual relationship with another person, that friendship tends to suffer because you're supposed to be with the person that, you know, if you're either with your boys or you're with your wife. Bar you're barring, with your girlfriends or yeah. you're with your husband. Barring something uh, catastrophic uh, age-wise. I mean, it is, for example, if you're a married couple, okay, and you've been having sex on a regular basis for however many years you're married, you know, it's certainly at a certain point age-wise, like mm -hmm. my parents, my, my dad, before he passed away, obviously that wasn't in the cards, right? And I don't think it was important to either of them because they were going through phases, you know, phases of their life. But barring, you know, a, a, an accident or something like that, you can't have a relationship where it's mm -hmm. sexual and then all of a sudden the sex is gone mm -hmm. and, and you expect it to be the same. It'll never be the same. It's it's, it's like, um, and, and even in a relationship, you have a line about um, women have two kinds of friends, girlfriends yeah, and boyfriends. boyfriends. If you're not sleeping with her, you're her girlfriend, right? Yeah. That's one of your lines. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the thing is, especially if there's chemistry there, if there's desire, especially on, on your side, and you're hanging around her, it's, it's, it's almost, it's akin to uh, going up to a, a cage that's got a, 
you know, a, a, a pit bull in there, and you keep wet, you keep you keep dragging a stake across, you know, stake across the uh, uh, the cage there. Sooner or later, you know, that that pit bull is going to bite you. I, mm-hmm. you and t- to be in that relationship and not be able to go to the next step. You're only going to frustrate the living hell out of yourself. You may as well just say goodbye. I'm glad you use that analogy too, because a lot of guys will say, well, like they don't want to believe in human, well, human nature. They don't want to believe that women have a particular nature that is like this particular just to females. They want to, th- there's, there's an idea, and this is because of blank slate equalism, that everybody's different and everybody is, you never know what you're going to get. The life is a box of chocolates. You never know what you're And it's like, no, there are, there are behaviors. There are predictable thought patterns. There are predictable strategies that both men and women use because they're trying to solve a reproductive problem. That's, I mean, and then that's, that gets into, you know, we can talk about other parts of human nature as well, but the, the counter to that is always, well, everybody's different. You can't possibly think that I, I know one, you know, it's, it's called what about ism, right? What about this one apex fallacy over here, Mr. Red pill guy. Oh, I knew a guy that you know, one yeah. of these deals. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in anecdotes. I'm interested in generalities. And people will say, well, you're getting into sweeping generalities. I'm sorry, but that's how the scientific process works. Mm-hmm. Okay. Generalities get a really bad rap, I think, because that's how we make predictions. If is is the behavior so predictable that we can sort of like you know, bet a little bit on it, then we're going to go for that. And I think that that's the only thing that's useful because if everything was random, if everybody was just, if, 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 if men were just these chaotic messes of, uh, maybe they are today, but if they were just these unpredictable forces of chaos and women are these fickle, unpredictable forces of nature themselves, then there's no point in trying to figure out anything. And God, you know, I just hope we just bump into each other and, and there's just, you know, the, the stars align and I meet with somebody that's, that's not nonsense there are there are predictable there's a predictable human nature between men and women but that's always the that's always the go-to rationale for people is individualism some people are going to listen to this especially women they're going to they're going to say are you saying men can't be friends with women no that's that well you are (laughs) let me let me let me put put what i would say not of the same degree let's put it that way exactly not Mm -hmm. yeah you're you're absolutely right you can you know whether you're married to the woman, uh, you know, it's a long-term relationship, whatever. You can develop a very close relationship, a bond, a, you know, a, a trusting bond. It'll, it'll never be the same as it would be with another guy, though. And that's actually good. And I wanna- at the same time, you got to remember, and I, I emphasize this just about every week, the more a person knows about you, the more they can hurt you. Yes. And it's usually the person the closest to you. That can hurt you the most, mm-hmm. and that's why vulnerability is BS. And we, right. we probably should do a whole show on. Well, I don't think we did already. I feel I, so vulnerable. I, want, I don't know. <laughs> I want to. I want to read a little bit of this here too, just so okay. you get an idea of how how Pook talks here. So, um, um, so he's he's talking to like a student, like a young man. Okay, right. just so we get this here. He says, "Friendship, abandon all hope who enter here." Now he's just sort of prefacing this by by saying, uh, trying to be like, it's almost like Dante's Inferno. Like he's like walking you through, the, well, the 15 levels of hell kind of thing. And so the, the young man says, but why, Pook? Why is friendship hopeless? I fall in love with my female friends. Do they not do the same? Pook then called up a woman. She appeared in a blaze of fire, probably from the place from which all women come from. <laughs> a, a woman, pray tell, what do you, what do you not go after? Uh, why do you not go after your male friends? The woman looked amazed that anyone could ask her that. And she says, because they are all just friends. But do they not fall in love with you? Yes, my male friends constantly fall in love with me. And speak truly, madam, what do you do and your male, what do you and your male friends do? Oh, well, we hang out. We talk a lot. Talk about what? Everything, anything. And they fall in love with you? Yes. Ah, said the pook now we have the answer away with you and the woman vanishes in a fireball so uh so what's the uh excuse me what's the answer here let me see i I gotta click down again here a reading from the book so yeah so yeah reading from the book of poo so so what what answer uh why uh what uh why 
it is a difference between the sexes, young man. What do you do with your friends? He looked thoughtfully. We play basketball. We hang out. We ride around. We play video games. We, he says, but do you and your guy friends ever sit around and talk about your feelings and the things going on in your life? <laughs> the young man looked angry. He said, hell no. He said, there's your answer. Men do not get together just to talk. Sound familiar? Yeah. We do things when we are, uh, we do things. When we are with our women friends, we talk much more. Since we reserve our talking, sharing emotions and experiences to our romantic interests, we get confused with our female friends. Mm -hmm. We begin to get interested in them because of this. Mm -hmm. But what about women, Pook? Pook looked, uh, Pook looked at the tele, uh, excuse me, Pook pointed to the telephone lines above them. Lightning surged and glowed along the lines. The phones, the phone lines, they're on fire. Indeed. When women get together, what do they do? The young man looked at the fire lines and said, they talk. And she said, about what? He looked thoughtfully as the sparks uh, rained on him and said, everything. Women usually aren't used to getting together to do uh, to, and doing pure action. So when they do things with, uh, so when they do so with their guy friends, they get a bit confused as well. I see. So. Avoid the friendship route. And this is the really this is the this is the point right here. Avoid the friendship route. When you see a woman you are interested in, go for her romantically. For a friend she sees, a friend you shall always be. Right. And so that goes at like and again, like I said, it's very prosaic, it's a very storytelling kind of thing. But what he's saying along these lines here is exactly what I've always said about like how men, women talk and men do. And the way that men communicate is by doing something. When men get together, they're looking out at the world. They're looking out at the game. They're looking out at the, you know, whatever they're fishing, whatever it is, they're looking out and they're talking to each other while they're looking at whatever it is that they're doing. Men are more, in, this is Steven Pinker here. Men are more interested in things. Women are more interested in people. When women get together, what do they do? They face each other. They get together for coffee. They get together for the intent to communicate with each other. There's no project there's just the need to communicate. Chat because, for the sake of chat. Chat for the sake of chatting because, and this is, uh, again, scientifically researched, scientifically proven, women are more wired for communication. They, they use more words. They text more. They, they infer more. They have a greater facility with communication, and they enjoy that communication because they're interested in people. That's what this goes back to. So, um, so just to show you just kind of how – you know how deep this kind of stuff goes. Uh, I'm going to go on to lesson three here. Let me, lesson... yeah, let me hit this one because this is judge okay. actions, sure. not by words. One of my favorite. In fact, I think it's still on the top of my my Twitter uh, page. Uh, don't listen to what people say. Watch what they do. Why? This one is the message. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do. Why? Because our actions, regardless of who you are, this applies to you, me, everybody listening. Mm -hmm. Your actions always betray you. You can say, oh, oh, I love you. You're the most important thing in my life. But what do the, you know, what do the actions say? Do they reflect what's coming back? And and it, it's it's a dead giveaway for people all the time. Just, mm -hmm. It's it's almost to the point where when people say things, okay, it's just like, just let it go through both ears. Just watch. Just watch. Mm -hmm. Because that's when you'll find the truth. You know, The, me the medium is the message. And right. this was the basis right. of the uh, conversations we had back then. This is the basis for the medium is the message. And at the end of this, so it's uh, the, the lesson here is judge by actions, not by words, okay? Right. Judge by her actions and not by her words. Judge by what she does, the, uh, more by what she does than by what your mind wants to see. Our vanity will cover, uh, will convert the images of every disinterested girl into secretly loving us. For women tell us what we want to hear. This is why we must judge by her actions and not by her words. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy to say, well, you should do that with guys too. Like, yeah, okay. But remember, you are not, assuming you're heterosexual, you're not romantically interested in guys. You're right. interested in what she's saying. So when guys tell me, um, oh, she's sending me mixed messages. No. The medium is the message. What is she doing with right. her behavior? How is she acting? Did she flake on dates? Did she, is she, uh, and you know, sometimes her, her words tend to be her actions as well. Like if she's telling you why she's doing something and you make the comparison, you see sort of a, a cognitive dissonance right there. That's the message. That's the message that you're getting. She's, she's not interested in you and you need to act accordingly. That's the part that people have a hard time with. In the world of politics. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. I've gotten to the point where when I, I listen to what they say, but I, I'm able to translate instantaneously what it means. Like when somebody's up there, we're going to be the most transparent administration you've ever seen. Oh, mm -hmm. so you're going to be hiding a lot of crap. Mm -hmm. that, that's, yeah. that's basically a translation because you watch what they do. You watch what they do and you see, well, wait a minute. That doesn't line up. That doesn't align with what you told me at the start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Right, okay. right, right. Real quick story with the, the feeling sure. kind of thing. It, it mm -hmm. just clicked something, a memory in my mind. I was in about eighth grade. And sitting around with a couple of buddies, and, and uh, we were talking about how different material felt. You know, a feeling thing, that's sort of a chick thing, right? Mm -hmm. But we were talking about wool and how it, you know, if you get hot, it makes you itch and that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'll never forget a friend of ours, Ricky. Ricky goes, Do you ever put on like your sister's or mom's pantyhose? <laughs> <laughs> I, looked, I looked at Kevin. Kevin looked at me, and I, we looked at Ricky, and I said, No, no, that's no. all of a sudden he just like, Shut up. <laughs> Okay, thank you for that little glimpse. God, sorry, I didn't mean to throw you off. No, on no, that. that's fine. That's fine. We're we're moving on to four here. Patience is the refined sense of confidence. Ooh, this is this is where I I have been described as incredibly impatient. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, if I went into confession, if 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 patience is a virtue, bless me, Father, I am virtueless. It's I just when mm -hmm. when I when I was a kid when I started driving, I <laughs> my mother told a great story. I felt that every red light with some sort of grand conspiracy to slow down me, Pat Campbell. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just, I was just like, it's like, I, I, I tend and I still am. In fact, some of my kids think their middle name is hurry up. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'll, I will tell you this. And here's, here's one of the things that I see in guys who are trying to sort of unlearn their beta behavior. This is, this kind of goes to, to beta behaviorism. When you look that people have used this example before. So forgive me if you guys have heard this before, but like when you see a very powerful lion, right? The powerful lion, if something goes on in his, in his periphery, if somebody's trying to get his attention or somebody, if something's going on, he's slow to look at what's going on and he's not reflexive. He's not reactive. Right. Okay. It's not like, ah, Oh, you know, and the, the sign of like, of sort of a beta mindset is the guy who's jumpy or, you know, what, what do you mean by that? You know, like, like reactive, that kind of thing. I I'm think nervous. that's, that's really, that, yeah. Nerve is like a nervous bird, right? Like if that's that. And I, I talked about this in beta tells I've got two, I've got an alpha tells essay and a beta tells essay and in beta tells, this is one of the things is like, it's hard for guys to do that too, because an alpha is so confident in, like, that's why I say patience is a refined sense of confidence and alpha, alpha men tend to be so confident that, they're not jumpy. They're not, they're reacting to what's important. Right. So what is very, what, what is like life threatening to a beta male? Like fight, that's that fight or flight thing, right? What's, what is, what is threatening to a beta male is just something happening in an alpha male's periphery. And so he's slow to, it's slow, but he's, he's, it's not, it's, it's almost like a disinterest kind of this thing. Is, this is something that comes with growth and with maturity. Mm -hmm. I, and we've talked a little bit about this on my local program too with you. If something big has happened to me, you know, mm -hmm. regardless of what it is, uh, I, I've got a general rule. I am not going to react to that until 24 hours later. Mm -hmm. And the reason is if I react mm -hmm. in the moment, okay, mm -hmm. a lot of times I'm going to make the wrong decision. I could say the wrong thing. Especially when it's something in a relationship, for example, if it's something important, just sit there, let the time go by because it's it's amazing what twenty four hours does. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you can you can you can write a write an email in the instant, and then a day later when you look at it, well, I, that's wrong. Not what yeah. I want to say that's not how I feel, but in the heat of the moment, that's how I felt. Right, right, exactly. And I and what he's getting into here is that this is a natural frame of mind for the more alpha guy. And this is, I'll read the, just the little end part here. He says the guys that can get almost any women are not scared or nervous that other guys are hitting on their girls. Right. He knows things. The other guys never will. In fact, he might let them have a uh, free reign to weed out the desperate and stupid chicks from the smart and picky ones. As with, uh, as with muscles, it is the strong guys that know that they are capable who are quiet and patient. It right. is the noisy guys that lack the skills. It's the large dogs that are quieter while the small dogs make up for their size with their obnoxious barking. Isn't that the it truth? Is, yes. It is the patient ones that control the world. The impatient ones are controlled 
buy it. That's a, a that's a really good pookism, I guess. Um, so that's that's what he's talking about here when we when we're looking at patients. And I, I think a lot of a lot of guys tend to struggle with this because if you have lived a life where you have been on edge or you have had to be reactive your whole life, or you've been constantly um, you've been browbeaten. You know, when we, we talk, you and I talk about nagging and stuff like that. You get to a point where guys will um, will try to. Uh, preempt their wife's nagging or preempt uh, a problem that's going to happen. They realize it's going to happen. I don't, if I do this, my wife will kill me, you know, that kind of stuff. And so they, there's that reaction that keeps going on for guys with that beta mindset. Whereas guys who are in control are the ones who, who are slow to slow to anger. Um, and because they have the confidence, because they know that they can react, they know that they have, like, I've always said this as well is that, confidence comes from options it's and it comes from knowing that you can generate those options as well i, th I think that it comes with maturity too yeah you know, a lot of these things that we're talking about right now mm -hmm. i don't even think it's realistic to expect like a 20 year old guy to have all these it oh, would yeah. be an, an oh, exceptional yeah. individual because no, no. you don't have the life experience right yeah exactly so here's okay here's no here's lesson five and this one's good this is trust the gut and if oh. anybody has ever read, and I, I i don't know if i put this in the first book but it's a it's a seminal post for me it's called gut check and I think you've even read this too, because I go into jealousy in this one, you know, like how your instincts, and when I talk about instinct, emotion, and reason, this is all, this is all about the instinct side of things. So, um, so he says, trust the gut. How do you trust the gut? The young man as he says, uh, uh, Mal, oh, you see, Pook led him to the breakfast table before it sat a kid. Now, how does the kid know to eat? Why the food is right in front of him. His nose smells it. He sees it. He drools. And so is the same with women. What does the kid do next? He takes a taste. But how does he know when to do it? His senses all tell him to do so. He knows when to eat because the food has been prepared, has, uh, has been cooked, and has been presented before him. But what mechanism tells him that? He says, his gut. Okay, so what this is, nature has a system in place. No philosophy in the world can do you good. Philosophies that supposedly work are the ones that best match nature's music. Mm -hmm. You can either follow the system and get what you want, or you can buck it in pain. So listen to that gut. Now, I think this is a really good one because a lot of people will say, well, you know, sometimes your instincts are wrong, and, and that can definitely be so. But what I, the reason I wrote gut check was mm. because so many guys would tell me like they would say, I, I think my girlfriend's cheating. I think you know, the, that that suspicion, it's not jealousy so much as it is suspicion. I think my, my girlfriend's cheating. Should I check her phone, Rolo? Why do you should I should I go through her texts? You know, should I? You know, why, are asking, why are they asking you for permission? I mean, should this I is, snoop? Yeah. 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 You know, with, with, with gut check and not just in a relationship, but uh, especially with politics and just stories in the news like the Jesse Smollett thing, you know, my, my mm -hmm. gut is so in tune with what's going on. I, I, I'm not joking when I say this. 99% of the time, it's spot on. It mm -hmm. rarely, rarely, rarely. And when it when it does let me down, it's because I'm missing some important part of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I wrote that too, because, uh, when I think a lot of guys don't trust their instincts or they rationalize their way out of it or women, women go straight from instinct to emotion anyways. And so it's not about what's going on as much as it's how it's, how am I feeling about this at the time? Guys, when, when guys see a girl, um, their instinct is I want to get with that girl, but then the rational mind steps in and says, no, she's out of your league. And so you basically have diffused that instinct to actually well, go, and married, take, so to you. go and take that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe something like that. But so you're diffusing that instinct. I'm not saying that rationality shouldn't be something that you use, right. but I think people don't listen to their instincts as much as they would like to because we've been conditioned to think like when we talk about jealousy or when we talk about um, uh, like, like we have, and this is just to put this in a red pill perspective here. Um, men have innate ways of telling when they should be mate guarding and when they shouldn't be mate guarding. And so, uh, like people always ask me, well, I'll never figure out when my wife's, uh, or my girlfriend's, uh, menstrual cycle is. So I'll never know when she's in a proliferative phase or whatever. And it's like, how do you, how do you figure out that kind of stuff out? And it's like, you already know, like your instinctual gut already knows when she is, when she's doing, you know, when she's amorous and when she's not, when she's jealous and when you're not. And it's like, when you feel those things, it's because it's because you're, it's so important to the human condition or to the male condition for sure. Um, that 
it has to be on all the time. So there's, there's certain awarenesses that we have as human beings that go on in our periphery. And the reason it's in our periphery is because if we try to focus on every little bit of stimulus that came into our awareness, we would go insane. We couldn't possibly multitask that much. But there are certain things that are so important to our existence, to our reproduction, to just our survival, that they have to be on all the time. So if I were to, like right now, if I were to throw a ball at your face, you would probably flinch or something like that. That's because something in your periphery came into your came into your focus. And mm -hmm. so you have a natural reaction to flinch or if a, if a bug comes at you, you try to get it away or something that that's the that's the instinct. And, and that's a good instinct. Right. I mean, obviously, you, want, you don't want to get something in your eye or anything like that. But mm -hmm. what's happened is you've had a peripheral awareness, something in your peripheral awareness that you're you're aware of but you're not consciously focusing on the ball that's flying at your head right there. So as that thing comes in from your periphery and it comes into your, your cognitive awareness, that's when you kind of, you know, flinch or do whatever it is that you're going to do. That's one illustration of some more complex things that we pay attention to. So when a woman is say, I'm going to go on a girl's night out, we're going to go spend a weekend in Vegas and you go, no, you're not, you're my woman, you know, and you go and you do your mate guarding thing right there. It's, it's her, it's her, you know, coming, you know, coming into your consciousness, of course, but she's wearing hoop earrings. She's wearing the red dress. She's, you know, she's talking in that voice again. She's asking me permission to go on the, you know, on, on a, a girl's night out or something like that. All of that stuff sort of builds up from your peripheral awareness into your conscious awareness. So that's something I, I don't know if I've ever talked about that. I, I think you're instinct. Yeah. Let's, I, the next one is in this, and I talked about this at the 21. Great prize. catch. Yeah. You are the great catch. You're the prize. You mm -hmm. are the prize. Most guys think that the women are the prize. They're, they're the catch. This is, this is, this is uh, counter to everything society pounds into you, you know, with the whole Disney, you know, fantasy kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You, you have to become the prize. In fact, one of the things is this is a great exercise and everybody listening to this, especially if you're struggling, you know, with relationships, you need to mm -hmm. ask yourself, why would any woman want you? Mm -hmm. yes. what, 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 what do you have to offer? What, like somebody was asking me, and I think I told you this before. They said, why do you, why do you bring Rolo on? Does he pay you for that? I bring Rolo on because he's got unique, compelling content. I can't get anywhere else. He adds value to the program. So is every, every guy out there. So, so why would anyone want to be with you? In fact, Car Carly, my producer had some fun with you on Friday towards the tail end, but it was a great mm -hmm. question. You know, so how did you find somebody to marry you? Right. You know, you a great story. People can listen to that on the podcast. I'm the prize, man. She found me. <laughs> but that's the whole mindset, though. And, and, mm -hmm. and you've got to, if you're not that prize right now, if you don't have any value that women would want, that's what you got to start working on. You've got to improve yourself, make yourself into that guy that women want to catch. Right. Right. Exactly. And uh, this, uh, if it, people want to know what, what did I do with this one? What, did, what, you know, who, what were we talking about in this particular thing? Um, if you read, uh, and this is in the first book, it's called just be yourself. And that's where a lot of this, this conversation came from. Um, so there, what is the first thing anybody will tell you when they don't know what else to tell you, like, why am I lonely? How come I can't find a girlfriend? Um, I, you know, like if you have a girlfriend, remember we're all playing friends and platonic friends. The first thing a woman will say is you're such a great guy. Any girl will be happy to have you except for me. I'm not going to have you. I'm going to go have sex with Doors over that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But what do they tell you? What do guys say? Just be yourself and you'll get the girl. Just be yourself. Anybody would be happy to be with you, except for me, but anybody will be happy to be <laughs> with you. Just be yourself. Yeah, just just be yourself, and the right girl will come along. That's that's what we – like, I think that's kind of like – that might be even too old school for, like, you know, Red Pill 2020, but there was a time where he had to address this, and that's what he's doing here, is that, like, guys when they don't – or women, when they don't know what else to tell you, that's what they say. Just be yourself. Well, mm -hmm. the problem with that is, is the self that you are is not the, the self is not going to be attractive to the kind of person that you would like to get you would like to get with. Right. At some point, men have to become well, I like the way that I am right now. OK, fine. But maybe you're like just being yourself is like eating uh, a, you know, half a pizza pie and, and downing six you know, beers while you're watching anime on a Saturday evening. I can't understand why Fitness America models don't like me. I'm just being myself. 
<laughs> well, that, you know, and, and so of course, what everybody says is you just got to be the best self. You got to be your best self. Your quality <laughs> woman is waiting for you at Planet Fitness where they worship mediocrity. Yeah, you got hey, don't, donut Fridays, man. Put <laughs> your goals on the way out, right? Because there's some planet fatness. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so what what I'm what he's talking about here is that you need to become you need to just being yourself is not enough. You have to um, you have to be more. You have to be more than what you are and you have to be your best self. And that's I mean, and really when when people tell me that personality is static this it's right. like i go back to this and i go this is bullshit right here because uh first of all I, I i know this from from having been into personality studies since the day i got into you know psychology at university mm -hmm. personality is not static and you are who you say you are if you want to be a different individual like i follow this guy on twitter i forget the guy's name but he's this really oh, He's a very overweight guy, morbidly obese, but he posts all of these videos of him in the gym and just like it's his journey from being like like 500 pounds to hopefully he's going to be, you know, uh, in, in, an in shape kind of guy. Right. Why? Why wouldn't he just want to be himself? And why is it the girls who, he, you know, why is it a bikini models not you know fawning all over him? Because he's not the best self that he can be. Right. By, by the way, and I put this up too as a tweet underneath that picture we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. How will you know when you become that guy? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, here's here's a couple of clues. When guys start saying, I wish I were you, mm -hmm. when guys ask you for advice, when women uh start to envy you and they're they're gonna be drawn to you, when, mm -hmm. when those things happen, it's obvious you're there. Mm -hmm. Well, for and, and and getting back to the prize mentality, the prize mentality is something that PUA has used for a very long time because you have to decide at some point that you your frame is worth a woman coming into. Most guys never give themselves the permission to even think of themselves in that way because they've been taught from five years old that they're supposed to be serviceable, that they're supposed to defer to women, that they're supposed like they women don't qualify to them. They qualify to women. I was just talking about. In fact, my latest essay is about exactly this, about standards. Why is it that men don't get standards? Why is it such a big deal when like uh, Rich Cooper puts out six like criteria for right. women to live up to in order to to be considered for his you know, why is that? Why, why, why do women just lose their minds at that? Because you flip the script. The rich is the prize. You are the prize. You're the guy who's setting the tone. They qualify to you. Most guys will say, oh, that's just being arrogant. If you do that, no woman is going to want to get with you. But no, hold, hold on. You're, you're on to something. This is, and this is another sign that you're there. That woman, whoever the woman is that you're, you know, interested in or want, want to be interested, she will tell you point blank, you got a big ego. Mm -hmm. But she knows she she wants that. She's not going to say that, but she wants that because you're not going to be where you are unless you've got an ego. Yes, yes. And that's what it, and you know when we talk about and I'm not saying okay because guys are going to hit me up on this. They're going to say when I when I say or I I I, po I repost that tweet about um <clears throat> how women are attracted to men with uh traits like dark triad traits like psychopathy. They say, well, "What do you, does that mean? I got to be a psychopath?" Oh, forget that. No, man. What that means is you need to at least cop some of that that energy. Like understand that that's what's going on. It doesn't mean you have to be a psychopath. It just means that you need to know what's going on. You need to know why women are attracted to those certain those certain traits and use that information accordingly. It doesn't mean you have to go be Ted Bundy, okay? It just means that you have to you, – I always tell guys this. Like when we talk about the nice guy versus a jerk, is it what I got to be a jerk? No, but you need to harness the energy of the jerk. You need to find some way to use that in a pro-social way but also a way that makes you attractive because that's what's going to attract women. And you have to have – have the, and the only way you can do that really is you've got to have the balls to say, you know what? I'm making the rules. My frame is worth coming into. I'm going to be the guy that other men want to be and other women want to bang. Yeah. So, but it, uh, it's almost like Jack Nicholson from A Few Good Men. You mm -hmm. want me on that wall. You need me on. You need that wall. to be on that wall. Those qualities in you. Yes, yes. because those were traits. Those are survival traits. Right. We say, well, we don't need those tra traits anymore. Like, okay, first of all, that's nonsense. And second of all. Okay, but still, that's what women are attracted to. Mm -hmm. So if that's if your goal is to go from being sexless to actually having a girlfriend and having it in your frame, you at some point need to have the the idea in your head that you are someone that a woman needs to qualify to. 
And if you can't say I'm the prize that she needs to, and like, remember how you and I talk about how guys default to self-deprecation all the time, how they always no. have, they want it because they think that by doing that, it make it builds them up because it builds their wives up because they think that, well, I can't believe that she would go for a schmuck like me. That means that she'll like me that much more but it has the opposite effect. But the it's reason- just, it's just like, we hear the, I hear this from politicians all the time. I got lucky, I married up, right? So your mm -hmm. wife is sitting around with all of her friends and what you just told all of her friends is she settled. She could have done a hell of a she lot better. A lot better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so that's, that's one side of it. But the other side of it is this, why do guys default to that? Why is that a reflex for most beta men? Because they never give themselves the damn permission to say, you know what, I'm all of that. I am the prize. She's lucky. How come they don't default to this? She's lucky to have me. She's yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, how how come? Why isn't that? Why you know? Yeah. You you like what you like what like what well like what Carly said. You want to trigger a female audience? That's yeah, the thing to say. Yeah. Well, like what Carly said. Like Carly says to me, she says, "Oh, you know, how did you ever find a, a woman to to get with you or whatever?" And I'm like, and and the first thing I was thinking was, my wife's lucky to have me. You know, and she is lucky to have me and, and we're, we're, we're a good match. Like that's not me being arrogant or an asshole, but I, it, it, you have to train yourself to think of yourself as the prize. And that, how do you know you've got to that point? That's your reflex. Your reflex is she's lucky to have me and not because I'm an asshole, but because that's just the stated fact. But a, a lot of guys will go, I, well, I'm in the, even in a private conversation, I'm so lucky I found you. Mm hmm or yeah. whatever. Well, I mean, there's a, the, in a, in a private conversation to say, look, um, you know, I appreciate you. That's really what you're saying. Like it, it's one thing to say, I'm so lucky I found you, boy. If it, you know, if the clouds hadn't parted and the gods hadn't smiled on my side of the field, I never would have been, a, you know, that's one thing. It's another we thing to so say, lucky. I appreciate, I appreciate you being in my life. We uh, are that's, so that's lucky. A different energy. That's yeah. sort of we're a so well, lucky to be, uh, yeah, to be with each other. We're so lucky we found each other in this great, you know, in this big world. Okay. Why? But see, here's the thing. Again, why is that the reflex? Why do we reflexively think like we're we're less and they are more? Because we've been taught that since the, we teach our boys as if they're defective girls. We've taught them to man down. We've taught them to to believe in fortune. That that that's why we say, did you get lucky last night? It had nothing to do with luck. It had more to do with attraction and all of these things that are predictable because again, generalities, right? It had nothing to do with that, but we're going to, we're going to frame it in the sense that it's, it's some fortunate thing. Or if we want to make it religious, we can say, well, God gave you to me or you were predestined to have oh, you. That, that line you had last week from the lady from the Christian <laughs> broadcast network who uh, mm. was engaged to God for a year. She thought, she thought he was going to, you know, finally get engaged to her. And he goes, God told me I have to give you back. That yeah. is the most. That is the most spectacular no. break of line I've ever heard in my life. Because you can't you can't be mad at me because well, God, God told me. Right? Yep. Yeah, God said to me. Yeah, that's the message I got from from wow. uh, the Lord of the Universe. <laughs> yeah. On one hand, it's, it's, it's an off, it's a brilliant weasel. actually. It's a brilliant move because it flips the script. Weasel, it's weasel like, but it is brilliant at the same time. It's like <laughs> okay, wow. okay, okay. Number seven is respect is all. This is an easy one. Um, that, and that, that's the, the idea of this whole thing. And again, he's still going through this, this conversation with this young man. Um, so respect is all, um, I, I think that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. I've written several things on respect, honestly. And, and this was, this particular lesson gave me the idea that, um, not only do men and women have different concepts of love, they have different concepts of respect. So respect between two men is earned and it's merited. And we want to think that that is the universal um, definition of respect is right. in, a, in a masculine sense. Whereas women res expect respect by default because women just are. Men must become. So there are two different concepts of respect when we talk about respect. So when women, when guys, I've, 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 from, from a very early age, I've had, pe I've had people say, Rolla, you don't respect women. Um, and I, so what I do would always do, what I would always do is default to, well, what have they done to earn it? Well, th they don't have to earn it. They're women. Why? You know, well, because their concept of respect is based on a female context, whereas a male context is we must do, we must perform. So if you ever want to know like why, you know, when we talk about how um, men have the burden of performance, that's also part of that. So if you're, if you're a MGTOW or if you're, I don't care, whatever you are, you, you 
you want to say, I'm, I'm just leaving the game. Well, you, you think you're leaving the game, but you still are based on your performance, even if it has nothing to do with women at all. So if you're, you know, if your life reflects that, if you're, if you're, a you know, you've done something with your life, you've done something significant with your life, whether you're a, you're a, a star athlete or you have some talent or something like that, and you build that up. That's one thing because you, you're doing something, but no one is going to respect you for doing nothing. As is it man. better to be feared or respected? Tony Stark. And I say, is it too much to ask for both? For both. Yeah. Uh, by the way, by the way, Tony Stark, the actual character in Iron Man, that movie, that first one, he really embodies a lot of people think, well, he's you know really arrogant, got big ego and stuff, but that's what makes him the guy. That's mm-hmm. what makes him the guy. Now, not, not everybody needs it at that degree, but I mean that's part of the magic of yeah. Tony, Tony Stark. That's funny you should it's funny you should mention that too, because in the middle of this one, he says, Okay, so um they ask they actually ask Socrates in this. They say, um, uh, excuse me, what is it? Uh the, the question about respect is why is respect so vital? And he says, where there is reverence, there is fear, but there is not reverence everywhere that there is fear because fear presumably has a wider extension than reverence. So that, I don't know if that answers your question or not, but the, the, the respect thing. And here's, here's, here's something uh, I think that's important with women, especially if you're married or in a long-term relationship, guys out there have, you know, you treat me like another child or you, you don't, they, they, because they've bought into the egalitarian view. You do not treat me as an equal. You don't treat me as an adult on an equal, on an equal plane with you. That's sort of a, it's a, a, an area that you got to be sort of sensitive to in a relationship Mm -hmm. because what, what I see is disrespectful. What you see is disrespectful is going to be very different from what women perceive as disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, because women demand a default respect. Again, women just are, men must become. <clears throat> so you need to become a respectable man. A woman does not have to do that. In fact, if you question her respectability, that puts the onus on you. That makes you look bad as a man for not respecting her just by default, right? Well, you don't respect her as a woman. You know, and, a lot, and of course, you know, a lot of blue pill alphas like to use that as their white knighting technique. You need to respect that young lady. You know, and it, because that is yeah. there, there's a difference in the paradigm right there. I, I, there's something to be said about how women, you know, I talked about how guys carry themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't want to speak for you, but for myself, at least I want I want a woman that is going to be be classy, behave in a classy fashion. Mm-hmm. I don't want somebody that's going to be a skank. There was a I was watching something a couple of weeks ago, YouTube video, and it had uh, Sir Mix a lot. I think out in Seattle on stage with the, the symphony doing uh i like big butts right and, and 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 all of these like white women come up that are all drunk and they're all fat and they're dancing like they're they're, they're in a strip club and it's like i'm looking at i can't there. believe it if they, if it was my wife or, or you know one of my daughters i'd be like oh my god have you no sense of shame but there's there's something to be said for the way they conduct themselves right i mean that what, what do we say when we marry a woman right make you got to make me a respectable woman you know, so a wife is like automatically respectable. That's the that's sort of like the jingo, I guess. Or the jingo. Me is respectable. I, I don't yeah. make people. Respectable. Oh, I, I, I got to read this last part here. Okay. So this is funny. It's like a man that can walk. And this is part of the respect thing. A man that can walk away means that he has his pick of the litter and the woman and the woman can be easily replaced. You won't find the lawyer or doctor or politician be uh, be entangled to a woman at first. And so, so the great catch is always willing to walk away. So the great catch is respect. She is supposed to celebrate life with you, not use you as a peon. Be a man and respect attends to itself. Right. So remember what, um, what was I going to say is, um, I, 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 I mean, I think it's, I'm, I'm thinking it was rich that said this is that, oh yeah, here it is. Um, if you treat her like a celebrity, she will treat you like a fan. And a lot of, uh, I, I, I put that out there and I, when that first came out, like, I think I retweeted, I think it was rich that said that, um, I put that out there. And of course the normies that read, that read that just lost their minds, right? Well, you know, it should be equal or, or it should be, you know, you guys should be, again, it falls back on that egalitarian ideal. Um, but here again, here's the thing is a woman cannot look up to you if she is your equal. 
Why do women want taller guys? Because they want to look up to that guy. Because they because that is a physical manifestation of dominance. And so they want to be able to look up. They want to have the arms around. They want that's why they want big arms, right? So that they can feel safe, so that they can be in that submissive position, naturally in that submissive position. There, right? there's, there's, and this isn't applicable to all, but I've I've heard from a lot of guys that you know bend over backwards to do things for their wives or their girlfriends. Mm -hmm. and, and the more they do nice things the shittier they're treated. It, right. it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't it's make the, sense. Does it? I know. <laughs> but, 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 but if all of a sudden they change that and they're not nice, all of a sudden she's enamored with you. It's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's the fluke of all time. Yeah. And why, and here's that. Why is that? Why do women, why would women try to treat you more shitty because of that? And really it's her testing you. It's her saying it's her pushing you and see if you're going to push back. And when you say no, what you do is you kick in that sense of dread. Yeah, well, she's going to push you harder. It's like it's like what what does a child do when it's testing its parents? Is it tries to do some misbehave someplace? If it doesn't get a reaction, it tries the the next level in intensity of that. It's the same principle. Um, I like I also like the idea of how um, women say, "Well, you treat me like a child." It's like, well, you want to be treated as if you're so if you're so. It's it's one thing to be like. To be domineering, I think, is really the word that we're talking. It's one thing to to use, uh, as it Shakespeare said, it's it's great to have a giant strength, but it's tyrannous to use it as a giant. Women still want you to have the giant strength. They still want you to have the capacity to kill another man if you if they have to. They don't want you to do that, but they want you to have the capacity to do that. I've also said this is that women don't want a man to cheat, but they love a man who could cheat. And they want a guy that they know, like, again, who other men want to be and other women want to have sex with. They would love a guy who has those options and they know it has those options because it keeps them on their toes. It makes them their best. Right. What was it like the? I, I don't remember the the idiom here, but it's the the deer makes the wolf stronger, makes it more cunning, makes the wolf more uh, the, a better wolf because the deer is. It, and, and the wolf, of course, makes the deer more um, more flighty, more uh, able to escape. Right? It, it makes makes the deer better because of that. And, and maybe that's a bad analogy, but what I'm saying is that um, the two, because when when we get into sort of our natural roles, right there, both roles strengthen uh, the man and the woman if they're playing by those rules. If they're if they're if they're doing it from a naturalistic perspective. You br you brought up something last week that I thought about quite a bit over the past week that was just really profound. And you talked about you know a woman. One of the qualities you got to look for in a woman is somebody who really believes in you. For example, if you lose your job, okay, they're not going to panic. They're not going to go ape shit. They're going to go. I know you can. You're going to find something. You're going to make something yeah, happen. I, I know you. I, I know you, and you're going to come out on top. Yeah. It's going to work out fine. I trust you. That kind of stuff. Somebody that's there, that's got your back, that's supportive. Right or die, girl. Yeah. yeah. No, but 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 you that that I can't put a dollar figure on that because so many guys have the opposite of that. Yeah. yeah. And that can I, kill. You. Can kill you. Yeah, and that's and that's hard to do, you know, because okay, remember what we we're talking about how women want a guy who like what he is rather than who he is. At some point, when a woman invests herself emotionally in that guy because of what he was, um, she has to learn his character. She has to understand who he is at some point. I'm not saying it's not important who you are. It is important who you are, but that women don't come to you because of who you are. They come to you for what you are. But once you are with that woman, then yes, who you are might make a difference because if you are the kind of guy who has, uh, you know, who well, first of all has options, but also has the capacity to generate new options. That's when a woman cares about who you are, because if you're not that kind of guy, then, you know, then you're not going to have that girl who's going to say, OK, you lost your job. And uh, now I, I believe in you. Having a girl that believes in you is like gold, man. Yeah, I, I, that's, you can't, I can't put a dollar figure on it. The, yeah. uh, you, know, you mentioned, too, with the, the ability to change. One of the saddest things, and I see this a lot in my industry, is, is guys, especially over the age of 40, they're stuck. They're not. They're not willing to grow. They're not willing to learn new things. They're not learning. Willing to learn new skills, mm -hmm. or you know, to 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 change with the changing workforce and everything. As a result, they get pushed to the side. Yeah, and they feel and like it, they don't. They feel like they are entitled not to do that. Like, yeah. They, like yeah. Yeah, I've I've already reached a, a point in my life where I shouldn't have to do that. No, yeah. you always have to. That's burden of performance. Sorry, till the day they put you in the ground, you will have the burden of performance. We had a 27 year old guy uh, working with the group of channels I'm with. 
and he had been a producer, but he felt he felt it was his time to, to, to be a talk show host. Mm -hmm. And he said, he said, you know, I, I, I paid my dues. <laughs> it's 27. We're all looking at him going, what the hell are you talking about? You haven't even been fired yet. Yeah. But I mean, this, this, this sense of fired it, yet. you know uh, that the 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 uh, the trophy generation has has come up with that they're owed stuff just because mm -hmm. of they're there. Yeah. Okay. Let's say uh, number eight is only the sexual ones get the girls, and this is uh, this was brought about I think because um, a lot of guys thought that desexualizing themselves was the key. And I, I kind of talk about this in Iron Rule Tomasi number three, which is... Sexualize yourself. Is this surgical? What are you talking about? No, no. Sexualize yourself because most guys... Beta game is based around desexualizing yourself, being her friend. Like, be your friend oh. first and she'll love you, right? Or be her, you be her comfort, be her phone friend, be her emotional tampon, be the guy who's there for her all the time. Desexualize your... Be her girlfriend, right? That's why women have boyfriends and girlfriends. They only, they're only having sex with the boyfriends, right? They, but any guy that comes in and passes himself off as a friend, she interprets her, him as a girlfriend. So he's desexualizing himself. I would never do something like you see this occasionally still on Twitter. Occasionally these guys will be like, uh, I, I just retweeted this. This guy says, well, you know, most guys are really just into sex, but I am into rubbing your feet and I am into... <laughs> You know, and I am into carrying your books home from, and I'm there to support you. And I would be into this, and like, like as if he's not really sexual. Like it's it's, a, it's standard nice guy game to desexualize yourself or to try to it's slip. Like, like I was talking about this with the guys on on in Chicago yesterday about how uh, male feminists like to think that they're sliding in under the radar, right? Like they're, they're identifying more with a woman. And the only way that they can identify is to not come off as a sexual threat. And I don't mean like a rape threat. I mean like a sexual being. And so those guys, what they do is they end up, they desexualizing themselves, desexualize themselves, and they become what I call the stuffed animal right? They're the stuffed animal that's there so that when she's in her luteal phase of her menstrual cycle, that she can cry on you and she can, she can hug you and hold you and you could be the comfort provider. And so she needs, she needs a guy who's going to, to just, you know, pin her to the bed and nail her. And then she wants the guy who's going to be there to cry and to, to have a, uh, you know, like to be the stuffed animal, like she, to hug and to hold and have that, that, that side. Cause that's the two sides of hypergamy, right? It's alpha, seed and beta need, right? Third, well, go ahead, what, finish what I was going to say is what happens is when that guy, this guy's think of, about this in terms of beta game, um, guys think that once she has enough comfort, once she is more you know, like how they have familiarity and rapport and all that other stuff. And she's, she feels like almost like he's a brother. Like you've, I'm sure you've heard this before. Like women right. will say, I think of you as a brother, which means that sex with you would be like incest. Yeah. So, so what happens is the stuffed animal that she's used to picking up and hugging and crying into suddenly it has a heart on, you know, so oh, I got it. This thing has a heart on. I can't believe it. Well, I thought you were my friend. I thought you were my stuffed animal. And that that's when you get that sort of violent reaction from women for guys who used desexualization of themselves to try to get in, to try to get into her good graces, to try to be, to develop that familiarity. And it's mostly because those kind of guys are not comfortable with sexualizing themselves because they don't like the urgency. They don't like that part of the seduction. By the way, there's nothing wrong with rubbing feet. Unless your name is Dick Morris and you got a foot fetish. Kind of really? Thing. Are you good? Are you good at that? Are you good at rubbing feet? <laughs> Just, you, you ever, what was it? What was it? No, no, I said, no, I'm Pulp, um, fic, I'm pulp Fiction. I was like, he's like, would you ever, have you ever rubbed a man's foot? I'm kind of tired. I could use a foot rubber. Right now. <laughs> There's something that has to be said, though. You know, you're talking about an emotional tampon. Um, in a in a relationship, long-term relationship or a marriage, and again, I can't put a dollar value on this, for a woman to have somebody, a man, you know, that she's sexually involved with, a guy that she can actually talk with and confide in, okay, and, you know, vent or whatever, that, 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 like I said, there's, I can't put a dollar figure on it because – that is important to them. That's something that's going to cement cement the relationship. Not constantly, you know, whining about this thing or that thing, but if there's a real problem that you're the person they can go to and share yeah. it with. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying, okay, so here's the thing is, uh, like a lot of people will, will, of course, think in binary terms. They'll think, oh, well, Rolo's saying you just got to be the asshole alpha all the time and then, then you'll have a really successful relationship. And it's like, no, I mean, you still have to have some kind of compassion. You still have to at least 
have some degree of comfort in all of that. That's why it's alpha seed and beta need, right? You need the alpha guy to to breed with and you need the guy who's going to be dependable and 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 a, a good show you, know, you need a guy to cry on right you need a uh you need a husband who's going to be a good provider and all that other stuff too i think in a, in a relationship i should be the shoulder she's able to cry on yeah well that's the problem though is guy beta guys say i could do that if it's all about that you mean getting together and getting a woman the only thing i have to do is be like the uh, to set myself apart from other guys. All I got to do is desexualize myself and be a good shoulder to cry on when she needs me, and to be dependable and to be loyal and to be like a, a good dad, they, a future got, good dad. They've got the order wrong. They've got the order wrong. You've got the, that genuine oh. desire that gets you together to start. After mm -hmm. that, you can do that. But see, that's the thing is like like when I say that, guys think I'm saying you just have to be an asshole all the time. Yeah. No, but most guys are uncomfortable with that. And that's what he's talking about in this in this uh, this rule right here. Most guys don't make themselves sexual threats. And I don't mean, again, not rape, but like they don't make themselves somebody that a woman has, is forced to consider as a sexual partner. Most guys, they, they won't do that because they think that the key to a good relationship is to be the perfect boyfriend. And here's the thing. Perfect is boring. But we'll hear but, about that later. After that, you know, that that crying on the shoulder, that, you know, listening thing, she should want you more physically now than before. That's mm -hmm. how you got it right. 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 All right. Let's move on. Where's the net? We're, we're getting to number nine. I don't know if we're going to get to all of these, but let's see. Uh, oh, boy. This is a really good one. OK. Do not be contained by formula. Uh, I, I kind of talk about this a little bit when I when I got into domain dependency. Uh, that's where he's really, I, at least this is how I interpret this, is don't be bound by what you think is always going to work, right? Like that, just what we were talking about. Beta men tend to run beta game. They tend to want to identify with the feminine because they think that the more alike they are with a woman, the more that woman is going to be endeared to them is going to, is going to, it's, exact see them. And it's exactly the opposite, but that's the formula, right? I mean, that's what we're taught from a little, Oh, just be, be nice, be her friend. If you, if you're her friend first, then she'll like you and she'll consider you as a, as a, an intimate. No, 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 no. But that's the formula. Another thing is, um, and I, I talk about this quite a bit with, with respect to pickup artists. And I think that's where he was kind of going with this is that a lot of guys get locked into one style of game or they get into one kind of thing, either game works or it doesn't work it's either universally applicable in different contexts or it's not so when i talk about game or like when i get into the practice of the red pill and talk about game guys have a tendency to get formulaic they think that they can only do day game they can only go and meet girls on the street or they can only do nightclub game or they can only uh they the only sexual zone for them is going to be like with uh people who they've been introduced by their family or friends or i can only meet a girl at church or i can only meet girls in bookstores because that's where you meet quality women right um I can only do, I can, I can be, they become what's called domain dependent. And that's what I think he's getting in here is like, don't, don't be locked into one thing. Be able to use these tools, the, the tools that the red pill gives you, be able to use those in many different contexts. By the way, do we have any questions that came in today? Oh yeah, I've got several. Um, do you want to work on those real quick? I know you've got about half an hour left, right? Or no, yep. oh, I'm I gotta have an, a heart out at the top of the hour here. At the top of the hour, okay. Let's let's. Uh, anyways, we can stop right here. Um, we got up to nine. Um, I anybody wants to read the rest of these? Like I said, the uh, the um, link is in the description there. Um, showing this. Yeah, I so you can have a check out that. Um, let me read just a couple of these. Uh, Davy Furtado gave me five bucks. He says, "Is it?" of any good for an incel to learn game, build muscle, or should he first go out and learn how to make friends and get comfortable with socializing? Why not both? Um, if you're, if you're going like just what we were talking about a minute ago, if you, if it's not just be yourself, then how are you going to become the best self that you can be? Why not both? The thing is, is that I, I would say that you need to learn game and build muscle, of course, and, and get yourself physical. Um, what do you have the most direct control over? I would say your physique, how you can get yourself in the gym right now. And that's going to contribute to your ability to socialize because you'll feel better about yourself, first of all. And then second of all is you're going to look better. And then, um, you know, maybe it maybe it motivates you to go out and socialize. Well, I don't know why not both? Um, 
uh, who is it? Uh, somebody had it up. Here. Oh, Sam, Sam just had it up here. The, the parent thing too. If you're if you're you're a guy, a younger guy, single guy, that's one of the first things that's got to go because that's this it's just uh-huh. going to. Um, you're, you're, you're feeding almost like a disease. You're, mm-hmm. you're never going to get the real thing if you're playing around with, you know, Im- Im- imitation. I, I think there, there has to be something said about that, not even from a moral ground, but you're you're cheating yourself out of the real world. It's fake. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's the other thing. Yolo says, hi, would you please explain what the DJ Bible and the Don and Don Juan is? Okay, what that is, is this is old terminology from, uh, from So Suave. The DJ Bible was a collection of threads uh, that were sort of, a, if you guys really want practice, if you really want um, a prescription, the DJ Bible is a really good place to start. What it is, is it was sort of this series of collected posts that gave guys things to do, like make eye contact is one of them. But it's all these things that you can do if you want to change yourself into becoming the best person that you can be, if you if your goal is to get with girls or if you want to just simply live a better life, um, these were some the, the DJ Bible was a collection of all the things that you can do that can sort of help you get yourself on the way. Um, I'll put that in the description as well. The DJ Bible is really good. It's, it's a little bit outdated, I think, um, because of just some of the terminology and all that. A Don Juan is what we would just simply call a seducer or a PUA or an alpha. That's that's really what that was called. That's why they called the DJ Bible the Don Juan. And what is the evolutionary reason that women are more emotional? Um, because they had to be, because they are the nurturers. They are the ones who had to give life to the children. And it was, it was in their best interests to, or as in their evolutionary best interests to prioritize emotion before instinct or to just actually just stick with emotion um, because they, they naturally needed to be able to feel for another human being to nurture that being. At least this, that's the easy short version of that. There's some other stuff that goes along with that as well. First of all, we haven't been pushing. Smash the like button, please. Share yeah, this. Please. I got to bail on you. I'm going to let you finish. All right, man. I'll finish the rest of these out. Thanks, Pat. Thanks for for, for Wednesday, real quick. What, what was the Wednesday show going to be on? Uh, Wednesday. It's a possibility that I might have Andrew Tate on my show. So oh, we'll see if I can work that out. So I'm going to enter. I'm going to have another interview with Andrew Tate. All right. You're going to be on Friday with me, uh, 10 a.m. Central Time. Yes, sir. 1170 KFAQ. I'm yep. going to bid you adieu. You finish up with the questions. Yes, I will. Thanks a lot, Pat. Bye. Appreciate it. All right, you guys. Okay, I'm just going to run through the rest of these here really quick. Uh, Chris B. in Philly says, Beta Orbiter treats female friend as a girlfriend. Yes. Uh, they try to anyways. They try. They uh, Most Beta Orbiters think that they're in a relationship because what they're doing is they're, they think that by being – the the friend being the confidant being a girlfriend really um is in some way endearing and is putting them into um into the good graces of women because that is game that is a, it's beta game so uh thanks for that uh bjorn bjorn sassen uh 10 euros is patience contextual for example, and this is he's getting back to the part where we were talking about this on in the 15 rules. For example, let's say when interacting with women, should one desexualize himself first and show sexual interest later, which advised against uh, which advised against usually, but I call it patience too. Um, again, uh, it's funny that you should ask that because I think you were probably asking that Bjorn right about the same time that we were discussing we were discussing patience as being sort of an alpha trait. And then what happened is the very next lesson is, is what Pook was talking about, um, which is you do yourself no favors by desexualizing yourself as a man. You need to be you need to establish like this is this is going to sound really kind of like LARPy here for a second. But just bear with me. You need to establish yourself as a man and demand that women refer to you as a man and not as a girlfriend, not as another woman. And that's hard for guys to do because we've been brought up to be like, like, like I said, defective girls or defective women. And so our mindset, like most guys don't know how to interact with other guys. You know, like when, when you have a guy friend who says, I'm more comfortable around my girlfriends, or I have lots of platonic girlfriends. Um, you have to remember that that is the result of years of conditioning that have taught that guy that the proper way, the correct way to interact, not just with women, but with men as well, is in a female correct way. Let's talk about our feelings. Let's emote. Let's get together for coffee and just talk about what's going on. It's uh, one of the reasons why I think that we are politically and socially 
um, in a in a period in history where it's all about feels before reels is because we're seeing this manifest, this understanding of female correctness, the female, the, the best way to communicate, the best way to handle a problem is the female way. And we have taught at least the last three or four generations of men to, to do so. Well, we also apply that to our personal relationships as well. And we think that it's going to work and we find that it is actually not men who behave like women who get women. It's the men who behave like men. So what my, my advice is, is that you demand and, and you only ever deal with women as from a masculine, conventionally masculine dominant position. Don't communicate as a woman. Don't presume that to communicate as a woman, to, um, uh, to solve your problems or make your decisions or reflexively default to what would be a female correct way of thinking. Don't think that that is the way to think that, that you have to break yourself out of that. When I talk about unplugging from the matrix or when I talk about um, uh, killing the beta, this is key. This is instrumental in killing the beta and in, in turning yourself into a conventionally positively, ma that's why I wrote the book, positively masculine male is demanding to be referred to demanding to be called a man I, I i forget the damn post that i put this in but i was it was there was a um a conversation i had with an 18 year old guy one time and it was me this 18 year old ki kid and i think like a 22 or 24 year old woman were in this conversation and the kid referred to himself as a man he says well i'm a man and as a man i blah 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 right and, and the kid's like 18 Right. Well, technically, legally, he is a man, but he was demanding. I mean, just kind of, I don't know how maybe he was just he was just sort of coming to this on his own. But he was demanding to be referred to as a man at 18. And what happened was, of course, the 24 year old girl, goes, you're a man. <laughs> you know, even just to call yourself a man today is like it's like offensive. Women won't even like, especially like feminists and stuff, they won't refer to you as a man. They will refer to you as a male ally or an ally. They say, well, you know, women and their allies, they, they don't even want to say the word man. And I've got several posts called, you know, remove the man, um, where we want to remove just the letters M A N from the English language. It's no longer fireman, it's like firefighter, right? It's no longer policeman, it's like police person or whatever you want to call it. And we're supposed to in some way change the way that we think because we're going to eliminate and erase all of the we're going to erase the man from the con from our social discourse. It's not just the language, it's just our social discourse, right? Um, and so in doing so, to to say to demand to be treated as a man, to to demand to be able, first of all, you better be able to back it up, and then second of all, know that by doing so, you're going to be you're going to be vilified. You know, what do you mean you're a man? You're really a man. Like it's bad to call yourself a man, at least in Western culture right now. So be ready for that. Be ready for for that pushback. Uh, Pedro, Pedro, vote for Pedro. Um, keep doing a Pook series. Would you like me to? Um, would you like me to continue the rest of these? We only got to nine. I could probably do some more um, on my own channel. Um, if I don't get Tate, I might get Tate. We'll see. I, I'm talking with him right now. Um, what I was referring to earlier was the picture of him and Michaela Peterson. Um, just so, aren't you glad you waited till the end of this now? <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm talking to him right now. I would like to interview him. Um, I haven't done an interview with him in a while. So, and, and Tate and I have been good friends for a while. So. Um, well, I'm going to see about doing that for Wednesday's show. That should be fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, Abracadabra. I don't know what the hell this is. Ad, 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 ad. You just typed in a bunch of crap. Um, two Canadian dollars. Okay, here's your two Canadian dollars worth of advice. Genesis 3.5. Eyes open and you will be like God equals hypergamy. Hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting. I got asked this. Um, I think it was... I think it might have been last Wednesday. Um, they were asking me about, um, or maybe it was on John's show. We were asking about like the the creation story, right? The like, do you think that Adam was blue pill, right? Because Eve was the one that ate the apple, and she, her eyes were open, and his eyes were open, and and I, I got into that. I don't want to get too deep into that, but um, and I'm giving you way more than your two dollars here. Um, 
but there's a, a section in my book where I talk about the the creation story there too, and what the what the gender significance is of that. Um, there's there's a lot a lot in that, but does uh, does that mean that that's hyper? No, I mean it's you becoming aware. Really, I mean you think about the Genesis story, it's kind of like red pill and blue pill. You know, Je uh, was it uh, Eve took the blue pill, or excuse me, took the red pill by biting the apple, and then now we have the knowledge of good and evil, right? Uh, Rydal, another five bucks from Canada. Um, one, the Rational Male. Two, the Book of Pook. Three, Mystery Method. All the books you need for game in that order. Agree. Um, yeah, for right now, uh, unless somebody can, can show me something else. I think Mystery Method is great. You just have to, um, I don't know that Mystery Method, does Mystery have a book? I think he might have a, a series of books. If you really want to learn Mystery, um, go buy his books. I'm not going to say don't. Um, people have been jacking me around with my uh, my Kindle uh, book and by uploading uh, pirated PDFs of my my book. Um, I'm not going to name names because I don't know 100%, but it's interesting that it's happening now. But a lot of my book, my book's been available for quite some time in PDF as it is, but uh, it's interesting to see how widely spread it's become recently. Um, and I'm glad for that. I don't know that Mystery has a, a particular book. I know he has a plan of some sorts, but you, I would suggest if you're interested in understanding like the fundaments of game, there's no better place to go than Mystery. Uh, Pook is great, but again, like I said, it's prosaic and sometimes it's a little inaccessible for guys. So just bear that in mind. When, if you're going to read these, um, the links in the description here, make sure that you sort of go in with the right attitude when you're reading this stuff. Um, <clears throat> because like I said, a lot of people just sort of choke on it because it's, it's very prosaic. It's like reading a story and he's teaching lessons with the story. And I, like a, it's like parables, I guess, is really what it is. Uh, Red pill parables, that's pook. So um, if you don't know who Pook is, you need to know who Pook is. You, you, you can't call yourself Red Pill unless you know Pook. So, yeah, but I would say yes. Um, certainly if you want to learn game. <clears throat> but you also have to understand that it, game is incomplete without the Red Pill, and the Red Pill is incomplete without game. Red Pill is theory. Game is practice. Um, you take the results from one and apply it to the other. And let's see, last one here. I motionless HD. I don't know what this is. Four ninety nine. I spoke <clears throat> with friends about red pill philosophy and got totally judged and shut down for it. Anyway, to reverse it, uh, this while still becoming more alpha. Um, never talk about the red pill. Uh, I know you want to. Gosh, man, this is like the I think the fourth time somebody has asked me this. Is like, um, it, it, I understand that you want to spread red pill knowledge i understand that you want to share this with your friends or like particularly if you've got a friend who is in a bad relationship or is like heading for a marriage that you know is going to be bad or maybe your bro maybe it's your brother maybe somebody you're related to maybe it's your dad who's like getting married for the third time or something like that i get it um i understand why you want to do some of that kind of stuff so um I, I would definitely say um, be keep it to yourself. I know you want to be an evangelist. Just make sure that you um, make sure that you understand that I, I'm going to butcher this really quickly, but um, this is from 48 Laws of Power. Um, never appeal to truth unless you're prepared for the hostility and the violence and the anger that comes from disillusionment okay because what you're doing is you're disillusioning these people and a lot of people don't want to be unplugged there's a part in the matrix where uh, neo and morpheus are it's the part with the the woman in the red dress and uh morpheus says to neo he says Look around you, see all these people. These are the very minds that we want to unplug. But all of these people are so dependent on this system. They, the matrix is a system, really. The blue pill is a system as well. Um, and people will fight you to to remain in that because their existence depends on it. They they can't live the same life with the same hopes and the same dreams and the same ideals if they are if they become red pill if they become red pill aware. And one of the first things guys tell me is like, oh, damn you, Rolo, I, you, I can't listen to popular music anymore because it's all blue pill lyrics. Or, or man, I can't listen to Don't Stop Believing anymore. I can't listen to Ario Speedwagon because it's, it's all blue pill schmucks. Yeah, I mean, you can still enjoy it for the music that it is and you understand it, but there's still that part in the back of your head that goes, 
God, this is really schmaltzy blue pill crap. Um, so that's again, like there's no going back. You don't get to come back from that. And a lot of people aren't ready to, to make that step. Most people, like when we talk about the, the purple pill or we talk about the black pill, um, those guys are, I don't, I don't believe in the, in the black pill. I think those are just guys who are red pill, but they're unwilling to make the jump across the abyss to, to live in a red pill paradigm. They just, they either don't see the opportunity in it or whatever. Um, they don't know what to do with themselves because they have all this new information and they're, and they're not confident that it's tough, man. It takes a lot of time to, to really, well, first of all, internalize what the red pill shows you, but you, how do you apply that? Like, how do you, how do you go from, from the life that you used to live like ignorant with your head in the sand to actually being aware? It's like the allegory of the cave, right? I mean, that's what the whole thing, you know, is, but anyways, um, Ryan Sullivan says, Hey Rolo, any updates on our last email? I don't know what that topic was, Ryan. If you put that in the chat here, I'll be happy to look at it. Richard Alexander, 499. How do I differentiate between a girl who legitimately wants to take a few dates before sleeping with you, a decent girl, versus she sees you as beta bucks? Okay, well, here's the thing. When I talk about, and this is this, I think refers to the iron rule Tomasi number three which is any woman that makes you wait for sex by virtue of her making you wait for sex slight um, is there's something that mitigates that desire. The iron rule of Tomasi number three is not about, you got to bang every girl that you on the first date. Y'all got, you got to be the same night lay guy, right? I mean, great if you could do that, but, I don't expect, I don't, I would not expect that. And I don't think most guys would, because a lot of women have, they, they call me to the carpet for that. It's like, what are you saying? You know, you get your story straight. Do you want us to be sluts or do you want us to be uh, prudes, you know? And, or do you want to have a good girl? Like that's what, in fact, that's what you said right here is like, well, you know, a decent girl. Um, it's not about that. It's about desire. It's about testing for desire, about genuine desire. Um, Here's the thing. I always I always refer to this as is uh, the three strikes rule. If a woman is um, if you're still sexless after like three dates, that medium is the message, really. If you're sexless after four dates, well, you know, you're probably playing yourself. If you're sexless after six dates, um, you're probably an orbiter at that point. It's determined. And I'm not saying you have to sleep with every girl that on the first night. I'm just saying that. Like you're trying, you're using this rule to determine genuine desire. If she can't keep her hands off of you on the second date, you're probably doing pretty well. You're probably, she probably actually has some, some genuine desire for you. Um, remember women will break rules for alphas and they will make more rules for betas. And one of those rules is we're not having sex until I'm comfortable. Well, what that means is I will have, I'll be happy to have sex with, um, the guy who is a good hypergamous, uh, uh, opportunity for me to have sex immediately. But if you look like you are in any way, um, uh, a cat or a, 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 a dad, if you look like you might be a good provisioner, if you look like your boyfriend material, I'm going to give you these hoops to jump through. I'm going to make, I'm going to give you rules. And so understand why she is giving you rules for that. Understand why that's happening. Um, so how do you differentiate between those two? Well, it, it really comes down to genuine desire. What is she doing? Is she, is she breaking rules to get with you? Even if you've gone like three dates, right? Is she breaking rules because she wants to, are, are you turning her down for sex? Are you the one, like she, she really wants to have sex with you and you're like, whoa, whoa, slow down, blah, blah, blah. Um, are you the one at, at, after date three, you're like, oh, okay, this, this time is right. Let's go for it. Right. Um, is that you? Are you the guy who, are you the A guy? Are you the, are you the, or is she the hell yes girl? Um, those are just basic questions. Like, is she breaking with I think that's probably the easiest way to answer this question. Is she breaking rules to want to have sex with you? That's the whole thing. Um, I, it is 320 on the West coast. I will go for 10 more minutes because you have me for 10 minutes. I will definitely do, um, Ryan, if you, Ryan Sullivan, if you would be so kind as to uh, remind me of what our emails were about, I'm, I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, what's this next one here? Motionless. Uh, here it is. Um, I'm 18, moved out of my parents to live with a girlfriend. Uh, first mistake. 
lasted eight months together in relationship went bad. I was devastated, but quickly got better. Thanks to you, Rolo. Never been better. Oh, that's good, man. It's nice to have. You can <laughs> feel free to send me all of your all of your testimonies. <laughs> that's great. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that worked out for you, man. I'm glad. Uh, that's actually another one of the iron rules of Tomasi, which is um, shacking up. Never live with a woman um, that you don't intend to marry uh, in the next six months. And again, that's not a religious thing. That is simple pragmatism. You lose all uh, leverage when you are in a uh, in a, a live-in situation guys think well it'd be great man it's like we're, we're saving money <laughs> we're saving money on rent and i can get i can get laid whenever i want because we can't keep our hands off each other and then they realize that once they start living together they might as well be married and then the sex drops off because a woman has no motivation and no incentive to want to have sex with that guy and it becomes sex on her terms rather than sex on your terms and so all power that you had all sense of dread, all sense of urgency, all sense of competition, anxiety, all that stuff flies out the window. And, and then you, like most, this is, this is a reason I made this a, um, an iron rule is because the story is so common, just exactly what you were saying just a moment ago. Okay, guys. Um, let's see. I do have to, to do a few, um, a little bit of housekeeping here right now. Um, I am going to be doing Wednesday. I'm going, I'm trying to get Andrew Tate on my show. I'm going to see if I can, I can talk to him about what's going on and we're just going to catch up with him. One of the first shows I ever did on my solo show was with Andrew Tate. So we're going to talk to him. Um, and then let's see, I will be on with Pat, like he said, on Friday, that is going to be at 10 AM, uh, Eastern time. Is that Eastern time? Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Eight. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, 11 a.m. Eastern time, 10 a.m. Pacific time, or excuse me, uh, Central time uh, in the morning. Uh, just look at my, uh, just follow. If you haven't followed me on Facebook, you can find me on Facebook now. Um, let's see. Do I have that laying around here somewhere? Uh, ah, there you go. You can follow me on Facebook. That's me. Um, I, it's also in the description. I, I just started this new account on Facebook. I resisted Facebook for a very long time and then people kept hitting me up and Sam Bada actually convinced me to, to get on Facebook. So I am, uh, of course you can find me on Twitter. I am Rola Tomasi at rational mail. Um, and then of course my blog is the rational mail.com right there. And I've got a new, uh, I've got a new post up there, a new essay. Uh, it is, where did it go? Throw this one up there as well. Okay, it is the truth about standards. Um, I went into, like I was telling Rich before, I go into kind of a little bit of detail about how um, how men generally don't have any standards. We like to think that we do. We like to think that we vet, but it is actually not in our evolutionary best interest to vet when it comes to reproduction. And that ends up being, I'm not saying it's bad to vet. I'm just saying that from an evolutionary perspective that we, it, we can't afford to miss out on breeding opportunities. I, I, I went, it's actually a pretty good post. I think, um, how many pages in are we? I think we're probably about 300 comments on this. That's another thing, you know, I always want to, I, I, I don't, I, I, forget about this all the time, but um, if you are not a member of my blog community, please go and go and, and join the conversation. Uh, one of the things that I get a little bent out of shape on sometimes is when I get uh, cr uh, critics who will say, well, Rolo's this way or Rolo's that way. And then he doesn't believe in love and he doesn't believe in this and he's a cult leader and he doesn't, oh, it's a, uh, he doesn't, um, he doesn't, uh, he, he'll just block you if uh, he doesn't like what you have to say. And I'm like, you know what? Here's the thing is Twitter's not the place for that, first of all. And second of all, I've had an unmoderated comment threads on every single essay I've ever done for over eight years now. I have eight years worth of, of essays there. Um, and the comments have always been open. The only thing that I have ever banned people for on my, my, uh, my threads has been for spam. Um, or if you are blatantly trolling, I've never, I've never, dis I've never pulled uh, any dissenting voices on my, on my thing. So if you have a problem with something, if you want to, if you want to tell, and here's the thing is I will see those comments. Uh, I, I can't, I get notifications on every new comment on my blog. So if you're not part of that community, I would, I would encourage you to be a, become a part of the community of the, the commenting community. Um, if you have a disagreement with me, please, um, let me know what that is. 
Uh, okay, Ryan, finally, uh, regarding the forum and expanding rule zero. Oh, 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 so of oh, the forum. Yes, uh, Ryan, I'm definitely interested in that. I thought we were kind of like on a holding pattern with that. Uh, we're, uh, Ryan wants to do a, uh, an actual official forum for rule zero. Uh, I would be very interested in doing and working with you, Ryan, for doing that kind of stuff. So, um, again, hit me up. I thought you, you on your last communication, you had said something to the effect that, um, you had, you were kind of busy doing some stuff, but if that, if you're no longer busy, I'll be happy to talk with you. So, um, yes, I'm definitely interested. I, I know Ryan uh, Stone is also interested in expanding the Rule Zero uh, group to a, an actual official forum. So please, um, uh, yeah, get in touch with me, and uh, we'll we'll work it out. I'll I'll do the front end. I'll tell you what. I'll do the I'll do all the marketing and the um, the logos, and I'll make it look pretty. How's that? You you do the back end, and I'll do the front end. So we'll work it out that way. Um, so anyways, it is now 326. I'm going to cut out of here. Um, again, I'm going to encourage you, please, to, uh, if you haven't bought the book, um, go and pick up the Kindle version. If you, if you don't have the print versions, please get the print versions as well. Um, I always push the print versions, even though I make the least amount of royalties on those because you can't delete those. Um, I am deep into book four right now. I am expecting book four. I, I know I, I'm, I'm actually late on book four, but I, if you'll please excuse me, I've had a lot of really unexpected crap happen this year and I'm still having more of it thrown in my face. And I think you know what I'm talking about, but um, uh, quarter one of uh, 2020 will be uh, my projected somewhere in there. Like let's just say February right now, maybe it might be early March. We'll see. Um, I'm in the first round of edits that I am going through. And now, like I said, this is where the, the real work happens. It's going to be based on religion. Uh, I, most of you already know that. So uh, it's going to be how the red pill fits in with uh, religious mindsets, with Christianity, um, with uh, you know, Judaism, with uh, Muslim, uh, with Islam. Uh, and I will be still doing uh, religion and red pill as a regular feature of this channel. So watch out for that if that's your groove. Um, so anyways, thank you guys. Uh, watch out for me on Wednesday. Again, I'll, tr I'll do my best to get, um, to get Andrew on. Um, if I can't, I'm going to continue doing the, uh, the book of Pook here or will, or the, uh, the lessons of Pook. I think you guys were enjoying this. So maybe we'll get on to the rest of them, but if you haven't read Pook, check out the, um, the links below and, um, and we'll talk about it then. Uh, eventually I will. Okay. If I get Tate on, 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 on uh, Wednesday, then I'll talk to him. If not, we'll do this, but I'll in the future, like in another uh, episode or another show, I will definitely get to that. And here's the other thing is I've got my downstairs studio just about set up. So I'm going to do some video from my music room, uh, which will be interesting. Uh, and I'm going to do some pre-recorded stuff now too, because StreamYard is allowing pre-recorded stuff. And um, I plan on using their new features um, for that. So uh, if you don't follow me, please do. Um, you can also find me on Patreon. All of the information, if you want to support the show, is in the uh, the description there. Um, I could certainly use the help at the, these days. So uh, that's it. Thanks, guys. And I will see you guys next week.